Where should Kentucky's backcourt be ranked among the elite backcourts in college hoops? That is going to be the conversation on today's episode of the Wildcats Today podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak, writer and editor over at Kentucky Wildcats on SI, joined as always by my co-host, Carson Nash. Carson, it was a pretty good weekend. We went to the lake. We lost money on a UFC fight. Um, any other weekend thoughts? We got a big weekend coming up this weekend, huh? Yeah, no, it was it was a good weekend. It, yes, it poured was. the rain on us though at yes, the lake. It it torrential yes, rains. Yes, it did. Didn't see Darth Vader. Didn't see the Dark Star. But it was an all around fun weekend. If anybody's going to see Foreigner or this or in the sticks this weekend at Riverbend in Cincinnati. We'll be there. We'll be there. Um, Carson said he's buying beers. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> right. But got to give a quick shout out. Uh, softball team. Got a big dub ski in the playoffs. Uh, Karen Patel. I mean, just the GM of all time. And then Luke Wedding was the MVP yesterday. I played pretty well. I think you could have made the argument, but we'll give it to Luke. Uh, a great game all around yesterday. Um, but shout out. Survive in advance, baby. Next week. To next week we go. But – Carson, the field of 68, which is Jeff Goodman's thing, ranked the top 20 backcourts in college hoops. And the Wildcats were 16. We'll get to who is in front of them and why that's frustrating in a minute. So we'll, we'll get there. But, I mean, how do you think this is somewhat fair? Do you think this is completely asinine? What is your take on the Wildcats being listed as the 16th best backcourt in college basketball? I think I think it's kind of crazy, in my opinion. Like, exactly. the more I, I try to understand it, I'm like, hey, maybe he's thinking that they haven't played together. Yeah. They aren't gelling or this and that. And then you see the teams in front of them, and you're like, well, those teams haven't played together, and those guys haven't made the impact that our guys have made so far in college basketball. So yeah, it is a little frustrating um, to see that, and I I'd, I thought they would be top ten, uh, and I'm a little surprised where they're at. Well, I mean, you know, from covering the transfer portal, you know, for Kentucky, like looking at a lot of these players, Miles Rice, who's at Indiana, great player. Um, obviously, Janelle Davis over at Arkansas, great player. Um, but I mean, top to bottom, I, I just I think. I don't understand why people continue to undervalue this Kentucky basketball team. I I don't think people are buying into it, Carson, as much as you and I, and then on top of you and I, I think all the BBN. I mean, I, I think people are really buying into this team. People are getting excited. I don't think the national media is buying into it. I don't – I'm telling you, and, and I think there's a little – um I don't think that the that these you know media members they're looking at this and they're going well, you know, it, Coach Cal Perry's gone. It's almost like Cal's gone and Kentucky's kind of in trouble. I, I don't. I, I think Coach Pope's put together a roster that is going to succeed. And I'm telling you, I think the whole Kentucky's had every five star in the world for the past however long Cal was here. You know, a million years. It brain rotted the media. It, yes, to where now it's like, oh, no five stars. They are awful. That's not UConn had two five stars in the past five years. Yeah. But, I mean, Look at just, them. It's yes. What, uh, frankly, UConn is actually 17, and that kind of blows my mind. I, I, but you could give them like you. Oh, and I know. I know. That's what I'm saying. I looked down yeah. to and I saw UConn. I was like, how in the world is UConn ranked that low as well? Well, it's also like, I, I mean, you could give. Hurley, you and me in the backcourt, and I still think you should put it top. That's 10. what I'm saying. That's and part of my argument, too. It's yeah. like Pope utilizes his guards to the best of their yes. ability. That's a great point that we yes. get to. So, you know, that that's a solid point. I mean, Carson, this offense is elite. The ball movement, the open shots, the backcourt is going to thrive in this offense. Why is it 16th? So, I mean, Tell me this: what, what players listed here get you really fired up for this year for for um for the Wildcats? What 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 players are in this backcourt? Oh, you're saying for us, like which yeah. ones? Like who fires you up? Well, I would say 
I mean, you got to start off with Kirk Chris. Uh, he's a great shooter, great passer, uh, good splits, uh, pretty efficient. Um, of course, Jackson Robinson. Um, sure. He's going to be an NBA draft pick. Um, I I would count Kobe Brea as a backcourt piece. I know I probably do. him and Jackson will two three it. You know yeah. the. So I consider him a guard. Um, Lamont Butler. Uh, he's going to be really, really good as well. He's a leader. He's uh, he can control the game, game manager. Um, and I'm actually really excited for uh, Colin Chandler and Otega Owe as well. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I just I continue to get frustrated by where how people look at this basketball team, and if you look at what has succeeded over the last pretty much since COVID what has succeeded in college hoops. It is this team, this team precisely. So it really grinds my gears when people time after time again, I, I don't think give this team credit for how good it's going to be. Um, and Hey, I mean, that's fine. You know what I mean? It, we'll let the, this team show it on the court and, They'll be able to. I mean, in, in two or three months, they'll be able to prove it. You know, we, you and I don't have to defend them anymore. They can, they can show it themselves. But I, I'll tell you this, and you got to remember this too, ladies and gentlemen. Preseason rankings, they don't matter. This, this doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And I like me and Andrew were talking about, this could be a little engagement farming uh, out of them. Yeah, just because, because of, you know, you know who the best fan base is. You know who's going to click and comment. Exactly. And who they put at 15 does feel a little strategic, especially knowing when you do the research on this, on these two things, which we'll get to that here in a minute. This will be the line of, or not, the McCarthy's argument. Oh man. I don't want That was, a, a, I mean, a, a demon came out of me on that one. That was rough. <laughs> it's kind of like when the guy told me I pulled my foot off the bag last night at softball. I mean, we all saw a demon there too. It was just, <laughs> mm, it was about to get, you know, I, I, I take men's league softball serious as everyone should. <laughs> um and yes, fist fights might have to happen here or there, and I'm pro fist fight on the softball field. Make that very clear. But the so Carson, let me ask you this question: Where, if you had to predict right now, and so to reiterate, like I said, these lists don't matter. It's bulletin board material. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Pope, fire them up. Um, you know who's really good about that? It's football, but is Kirby Smart? He could be like. I saw the line for this game. It's 42, not 44. They're disrespecting you. You know what I mean? And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, are they really? Like, like you got to block. <laughs> or, yeah, it's kind of that. Have you ever seen Theo Vaughn do the when Jelly Roll accepts an award? Mm -hmm. That little, that little um, skit is hilarious. He goes, you got a size 11 foot and a size 7 shoe. That's the, if you haven't <laughs> seen that, go watch that. It's really funny. Um, but... So let me ask you this, Carson. When the season ends, when we're talking, hopefully we've hung a banner and all that, you know, where do you believe if you did this list again at the end of the season, where would Kentucky be ranked? If you had to guess right now? Um, I would say I'm gonna say top five. Okay. Go See, I don't know if I'd go that far. I don't know. I and in my and my reasoning is because I think we're going to be really efficient. And I I would favor efficiency over points per game, in my opinion. Yeah. That's fair. So, like, you go see, like, John L. Davis in his tournament game shot like three for eighty. But, like, I don't <laughs> want that. I don't want someone. I don't want someone coming in chucking up bricks just because they're good Build at the house. Yeah, yeah. I want I want ball movement and what that's what we're gonna have. We're gonna find our open shooters and take efficient shots. Like like Reed Shepard did last year, he shot over fifty percent, um, and was one of the most efficient players in college basketball. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I think that I think that that five to ten range is very realistic. I I look at these backcourts listed ahead of Kentucky, and they're all solid. They're all they're all great backcourts. There's no disputing that. <clears throat> but I also look at this list of backcourts, and I go. I wouldn't be one bit surprised to see Kentucky outperform this team and this team and this team and this team. You know and what I? You know what I've had forgotten about and what? realized when I went back and watched 
Who did uh, Lamont Bu- Lamont Butler hit that shot against? I got to think about this now. Give me a second to think about it. Was that was it FAU? Mm-hmm. So it was Janelle Davis. Yeah, that's funny. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I knew. I had to think about it. I, I that it was Janelle Davis guarding him. That is funny. I didn't know that. Well, I did. I did, but I I hadn't thought about it since we recruited them. Um, just another win for Kentucky over Cal. Sorry, <laughs> that's my new thing. People, y'all love put them the in whole, a locker. Put them in a locker. That's why I, that was. I'm glad that y'all appreciated that. That was that was fun. That was a fun thing to say. But I don't know, of course. I'm just tired of people not, you know, giving. And it's like, I mean, I, if I'm a UConn fan right now, I'm pissed. You know what I mean? I mean, what is that? Like, yeah, this, I, I think that the media overhypes teams and under. You're gonna tell teams. me a team that has Chucky Hepburn as their lead guard is going to be better than us. Come on. Yeah, now. And I think he's a fine player. I'm not going to sit here and say he's bad, but I'm not. No, Louisville will be good this year, but they're not going to be great and they're not going to beat yeah. us. Yeah. We hope we better hope so because no, I know. So that they're McCarthy's not. He's bad. was still dangerous, but um, I mean, I, I just, I top to bottom look at this roster, and I say to myself, and this is a, a conversation on both the back court and the front court. But I look at this and I say to myself, this is a team that has the balance you need to be great. You have shooting, you have defense, you have rebounding, you have passing, you have every aspect you need on the court. You have on this roster to where I, I say to myself, I I don't get and how I'm, and then even I, I'll tell you this I would take a veteran team over an uber talented team and a lot of people don't that's just the reality I mean these when these 18 year olds and I think I think we're a veteran old. team that has talent yes I agree that's yes I think that Jackson Robinson is gonna be an NBA player yeah, I think that Andrew Carr is going to sneak in the second round of the NBA draft. I think, I think this, Colin Chandler is going to be an NBA player at some point. I agree. I've seen him. That one dunk was insane. Um, I've seen him in mock drafts in the first yeah. round, Colin Chandler. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, been not playing basketball. Like, just say a lot about him. So, um, that's my take on this backcourt. So, but give your – give your I'm a, you know, normally I'm the one that does the shouting with this. Give me the spiel – Louisville was 15th, Carson Nash. How does that make you feel? I just don't understand it. I mean, I know they got Terrence Edwards Edwards yeah, from great JMU. Player, great player, yeah. He's good. He's really good. Don't get me wrong. But I just don't see how they are ranked ahead of us at all. I don't think Chucky – Chucky's not even as good as Lamont scoring-wise. So mm-hmm. – and I know for a fact he's not better defensively. So, it, uh, that's a win. Kirk Krissa is better than whoever they got at the three, the third guard spot for them. I I just don't I they Terrence Edwards, yeah, they have a big time player. They have a big time player. But offenses don't really work when you just go to one player the whole entire time. So I think I think our our guards are more well rounded. And I think I think Jackson Robinson's better than Terrence Edwards. I, I do. I he played in a bigger conference. He I mean I think he's just better than he is than Terrence is. Um, so I'm going to give Kentucky the edge over them every day. And then Indiana being ahead of us. I, I mean, I don't even know the names of their players. Yeah. Um, now, Miles so, Rice kid's pretty good. He came from Wazoo, I believe. Um, yeah. Like on that, but he, I just he's don't a great think. I, I don't I think. think him in the portal. Yeah. I don't think uh, Gabe Cups has beaten any of our players one on one. But I mean, it's just ridiculous to me. I think uh, Kentucky and I think UConn should both be way higher in this. Aiden, that Aiden Mahaney kid for UConn's a stud. I kind of wish we would have got him. Um, I do too. I like him a lot. But I think it's outrageous that two of the best X's and O's coaches in the country have teams that are ranked that low in guard play when that's who they utilize the most. Yeah, and it's not like if we had no talent and we were making that argument, I'd get it. But it, there's talent on top of how good of a coach – how good offensively this team's going to be thanks to Coach Fuger and thanks to Coach Pope. I mean, this is – you know, that's the reality. Every, that's everyone, why they, they released the – they released – UK released a list of players' career highs, and every single player on that list that is, that's playing for us has scored over 20 points in a game. 
Every single one of them. And, you know, and I'll tell you the thing about uh, Terrence Edwards. That, and I mean, he's, uh, he is a great player, but we have seen, oh, I think the SEC schedule um, just came out, which is huge. Um, Wildcats breaking news. Yeah, I think it just did. Hold on. I got to find this. Oh, it did come out. We'll, we'll look at that. We're going to have a show come out tomorrow. We're going to do three this week again. Um, a show is going to come out about the schedule. We're going to break it down. We knew the opponents. We didn't know the schedule. Now we yeah, know. Man, that matters. And so, you know, it's the, oh, okay. Oh, man, we have this tough stretch. You know, so we'll run through that um, on t- tomorrow. So that'll be fun. So be, be ready for that. But, um, you know, a lot of times, Carson, we see these um, these players come from these smaller schools. And I would say it's, it's close to 50-50. There's the hype around, oh, man, this guy averaged 18 at, at the JMU's. I was ready to say, like, Hogwarts. JMU's a solid school. I can't <laughs> quite say Hogwarts there. But <laughs> Hogwarts one point Gryffindor. <laughs> yeah, but but you know what I mean? Like, JMU is a bigger school than where Dalton Connect came from. You know what I mean? But still, you see this happen a lot. The same argu- argument can be made for Amari Williams. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Drexel. It, it's small schools. These players don't always pan out, but um, Terrence Edwards is a really solid player. Um, I think he's going to be a, a stud for – Yeah, he's their Louisville, best guy. But and it's not even I'm close. still taking Jackson Robinson. And yeah, that's oh, not, that's 100%. You're playing film. against better competition every yeah. game. I'm taking Came that guy. Bench and averaged 14.2 points per game. Led the t- I mean, yeah, I'm. Be he would average 20 at the JMU in the same amount of minutes, if not, you know, 22, yeah. I think. So um, that's thoughts there. So any other thoughts on this list, Carson? Because I want to ask you another question. After That's that. pretty much all I got. Um, I think I think they've got it twisted a little bit because everyone loved to be like, oh, Kentucky's not a veteran team, so we're not going to rank them as high. But they have skills. But now that we're veteran and have skill, they're still doing the same thing. So in my opinion, I think it's mostly just engagement farming because I don't see – it does not make sense to me at all because um, yeah. they love – I know Goodman loves to rave about older players. And so doing this just shows me that he, what he says doesn't really, isn't really what it means. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't dispute you on that. Um, so I want to ask you a question. Jasper Johnson is going to commit next week. I do not believe we have a day yet. Do we, we just have next week. Is that right? Oh no, yeah. Just so next week. The plan is for Tuesday's show a week from today to be break this down. What are the chances? Where do we stand? But I want to have, I want to ask you this question. You know, of course, Malachi Moreno committed on Friday. It was very exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what was one of his first things he said? Jasper, you know where home is. Um, So just give me a couple thoughts on where we stand with Jasper, A, and then B, how much do you think Malachi kind of helping recruit is, him? Open recruit is going to help in this in this battle for the Wildcats. Yeah, I'll start on the Malachi point first. Uh, I think it's really big. I think it shows Jasper that another very talented kid is trusting Pope to get him to where he wants to be. Yeah. Um, and he's another in-state kid and has grown up a Kentucky boy and Kentucky Wildcats fan his whole life. So it shows Jasper that he's not going to be alone in the process too. Um, and I think that's huge. Um, but then I also, I mean, I I think we we're making up some ground here because I, I heard we were yeah. a thir- distant third, but now, now it's neck and neck with us and Bama battling right out for that last spot. And normally yeah. in recruiting, when team gets hot late, that's the team who normally closes it out. Remember exactly like, like the thing with when Kobe Brea, we were like, Oh, he's taking visits to Duke UConn. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, watch out, Andrew, like recruiting's fluid. Like it, yeah. anything could change. And then smoke turned into fire real quick. Real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I, I um, it sounds like the NIL deals have quickly gotten close, you know, gotten close to even, um, to where now it's where does Jasper want to play? What best fits him? And we've talked about it here on this show. Both of these programs make sense for him. 
when it comes to system, when it comes to offensive system. Now, one is your home, you know what I mean, to where I think that – I. I I still I still think Jasper's gonna play for Kentucky. I I do. I still I just think it'd be crazy for him to go. I mean I mean live in Tuscaloosa? Are you kidding me? Come on, don't do that to yourself, Jasper. Don't do it to yourself. <laughs> uh, but all kidding aside, I, I I think the Wildcats win this. I do. Um, if something it, we say it all the time, and you have to recruiting is fluid. That could change. It could be all Alabama tomorrow. It could be all Alabama in ten minutes. This is yeah. just how it works. But I, mean, I just have a feeling. Yeah, I mean, he's a legacy. His, his, you know, dad was a great player here on the football field. I, I think that Jasper ends up in Kentucky, um, and that's just a gut feeling. They're, I mean, they have the other thing about this. They have kept this recruitment really close, close to their chest, man. Yeah, I, I tell you, you know, I, I've been covering recruiting now and you know college athletics i think it's going to be one of those where i'm i'm nervous up until he puts the hat on or agreed the, agreed yeah, like I'm Alabama be... Reno, you and i have pre-recorded that podcast like, well, yeah we, we knew but i'm telling you in the three years i've covered you know college athletics and, I, and I, i've never really seen a recruitment that's just so close you know so close i'll, to I'll give net. you a couple i'll give you a couple that i know for a fact that we lost and i'll give you one that i know we won because most of the time when we used to win recruit battles, it was like you knew they were coming here. Yeah. Um, but I remember Mohamed Bamba. I remember when he committed because he was supposed to be really good friends with Quad A Green. Yeah. And so we were like, oh, Mohamed's coming. And then he just spurns us for Texas. I remember Zion committing. He committed while I was at the Kentucky basketball game, and he committed to Duke. And I swore it was either Kentucky or Clemson because that's what it was then. And then, um, oh gosh, there was well one that went UK's way was Kevin Knox. I remember on Derby Day, I thought it was either Duke or North Carolina, and I just got an alert on my phone that he picked Kentucky. So I mean, anything can happen. Yeah, it really can. It really can. I am. Um, I remember watching. I was with my dad at a some like pizza place bar when Zion committed. I, I distinctly remember that, and I remember we were like the whole bar was like, yo, what? It was, it was pretty it was fun. I remember like hey, they put it on TV. It was Saturday, crazy. February 1st. It he was, comes what? back. Who comes? He makes back. the return. John Calipari is in Rupp Arena. Oh, Saturday, is February it released? 1st. Oh, that's a Saturday. Too. That's breaking oh, news. Man. Oh man. That's going to be awesome. And it's perfect that it's a Saturday. It had oh, to be a Saturday. It had to be a Saturday. Can you well, – okay, let me ask you another question. Duke, North Carolina, you've got your Kentucky, Louisville, your Tennessee, Kentucky. Where is that game going to be on the excitement of college basketball? I think that's the top five college basketball game of the regular season. I don't know this how it's year not. for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This year, I that's going to be crazy. I think, I think, I think Pope's first game against Duke that's going to be pretty electric. And then yeah. I think Cal at home. I think those are our two, yeah. two big big games. I just think Coach Cal coming to Lexington, which I'll tell you this. I already can't wait for that post game press conference. I can't wait to go sit in there. If he loses, um, he'll probably make Chin come out and do it. <laughs> I bet he will actually, because now he's not even under contract. You know what I mean? He might. Yeah. He might. Wouldn't that That's, be some? Oh, yeah. they would eat that up. They. Oh, that'd be yeah. That'd be really funny. Well, I can just already see. I can just already see how he's gonna react when he comes and he sees like all the local media that have like been asking him questions for years. He's like, hey. How are you guys? He's gonna, he's gonna be, so, he's, gonna be sure. so, he's gonna say something outrageous. I can already see it. He's gonna be so happy to see us. He's just gonna be stoked. But um, not he's gotta really. go walk his dogs. Yeah, I did. I tell you, I saw before people knew that he did that. Yeah, you called my me. grandparents. I do you remember? I told you that mm -hmm. my grandparents live over by where Coach Cal used to live, and I. You know, drive, pat, you know, and turn on whatever that you know road is over there. I don't even know where that area is. You know what I'm talking about? I don't yeah. even know like the term for that neighborhood. But, um, 
and I swing a Ricky, you know, there's his house, the next door. And then you, I swing a Ricky right there. And I just see coach Cal just what was pushing his dog in a stroller on his phone. And I, I remember like, I remember it took me like 10 seconds to register what had just happened. My brain was, I was just like, well, it was what? a crazy day. That was a crazy, crazy day. Uh, yeah. I, I remember seeing that. And that was before that was, this was before, you know, the him taking the job. This was, this was back when he was in the middle of the season last year. Yeah. I'm talking about the, I'm talking about the one, um, when he had already, he had just taken the that. job and he's just and walking the dog. Walking walking the dogs. Around, that was, that was insane. Yeah. I kind of felt that one. I kind of felt bad for him. I mean, the dude just trying to push his dog in the stroller. You know what I mean? He's just, he he's just walking his dog, right? But um, that is hilarious. It's um, Don Cal Perry. But I'm so serious. The first time I saw that, it, it took me like, I was like, was he just pushing his dog in a stroller? Like, what are we, what it's are we funny. doing? <laughs> it's kind of funny. It, it, it just took me a minute. It, it was one of those things where my brain had to just go, what the heck? I don't know. No, it was funny. But that's going to do it for today's show. So we're going to have three shows this week total. Tomorrow, Wednesday, we are going to have a breakdown of the schedule. Uh, I'm getting ready to have an article. I'll write that the second I'm done um, here uploading this podcast. So I'll have an article coming out on Kentucky Wildcats on SI. Um, and then on Thursday, we want to hear your all's thoughts. Carson, you want to talk about our topic Thursday and, and so people can give us their thoughts, their suggestions for some players? Yeah, we were going to do a little football episode because, you know, we're getting we're getting closer to the beginning of the season, which has got us excited for sure. Yeah. Um, we were going to give you all uh, five players that you all may not know but are going to want to know before the season uh, and give, give our list of those yeah. players and why they matter. So if you've got any players that you think you want to throw and, and you should be on that list, put those in the YouTube comments. And also put in the YouTube comments where Kentucky's uh, backcourt should be ranked in this list. Are they too low? Are they too high? Are they perfect? Let us know that in the YouTube comments as well. Yeah, and if you're a Louisville fan, let us know why you're going to win just like you do every year and how and Chucky then, is a better guard than Lamont Butler. Yeah, which, yeah, justify <laughs> that one. I need 250 words MLA format. Thank you. <laughs> but um, yeah, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button once again. Helps the show a ton. And don't forget, we are on everywhere you can find a podcast. Every podcast platform. If you like watching on YouTube, but hey, you're driving on a family vacation, whatever, and maybe you know they say it's frowned upon to um, you know watch YouTube videos when you drive. Carson. Or you're drinking a bucket in Aruba by the pool. There you go. And you just want to lay back a little, little shades on and you want to, Oh, that was a little shout out to, to the, to the Nash family. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I just, that just hit me in the face. Happy that birthday, time. dad. Shout out to you. Happy birthday to the goat, Mr. Nash. When, when was your dad's birthday? Is it today? It was on Sunday. Okay, why would you not? We could have, I would have done a Thursday shout out. I would have, well, happy belated because Carson belated birthday. decided to keep that. You He's know, in Aruba. he doesn't know what day it is. That's a good point. That's <laughs> That's a, that's funny. Uh, but yes, like I said, don't forget we are on podcast platforms. If you're ever in a position you want to listen instead of watch, check us out over on Spotify, wherever you can find a podcast. We are there. That's going to do it for today's episode. We'll see you tomorrow to break down the schedule right here on the Wildcats Today podcast. <laughs>